G'day ladies and gents, Cubic Meter here. A year ago, I made this behemoth of a copper oxidizing factory to replace this actual behemoth of a copper oxidizing factory. And I was pretty satisfied with this design, primarily because it did exactly what it was intended to do, which is take copper blocks and convert it into oxidized copper. At least I was satisfied with the design until I tried to build it in survival. On the Wavetech server, me and a couple other Wavetech members actually built the copper oxidizer on the server right next to our massive copper reactor. And actually building this in survival and getting it working gave me an entire new epiphany for transferring designs from creative to survival. I mean, the farm works very well in theory, however the margin for error is very small. For example, we have all of these mechanisms which have very specific amounts of items in each inventory, and the items in the inventories have to be perfectly synchronized. So if I happen to misplace an item in one of these, and then tick warp the farm for a bit, something will eventually go wrong down the line, causing the smart blast chamber to trip its fault detection. This was a pretty cool feature that the copper farm could actually detect a fault and automatically shut down. However, then locating the fault within all of this wiring was not very easy. And of course, when we went and actually built this thing in survival, some of us, including maybe even myself, actually put the wrong amount of items into these inventories and so I had to go through and manually fix every single one of these mechanisms to get the entire farm working properly. With all of these issues in mind, I decided to go ahead and spend an entire weekend designing the Catalytic Converter 2.0. This new design replaces all of the complex logic of the old design with a robust wiring scheme that is driven entirely by the input block stream. This means that there are no hidden logic states and any mistakes made in building the machine will show up bright as day in the schematic verifier. To top it all off, the design is perfectly modular, allowing you to scale it all the way back so you don't have to expend as much copper to fill up the silos. But wait, the design is modular? That makes me think. And so my descent into insanity begins. That's right, the multi-farm now has an input stream that can be taken directly from the copper oxidizer. This multi-farm might become an unhealthy obsession. But hey, now you can have a machine that produces oxidized copper attached directly to your blast chamber multi-farm. Using the farm is pretty simple. All you need to do is go up to this chest at the top, throw in a shulker box of copper blocks, then you can go underneath to here, Grab out some blocks of copper from this dropper. Then you can start up this clock, like so. Switch on an auto clicker. And then you start placing down the copper. And the new copper begins displacing all of the oxidized copper out of the bottom of the copper silo. Activating random ticks again and tick warping the farm. It'll take roughly 5 minutes to deplete that entire shulker box. With this larger silo, you can get away with extracting a shulker box of oxidized copper approximately every 2 hours. With the smaller silo however, you'll need to wait at least 5 hours before extracting each shulker box of oxidized copper. This is simply a consequence of the rate of aging copper being directly proportional to the amount of copper blocks that you have present at any given time. So the trade-off is simply this, get oxidized copper faster, you need to have more copper. If we compare the two options, we can see that the smaller version requires approximately two shulker boxes of both the oxidized cut copper to build the silos and catalyze the oxidization reaction, but also it will cache about two shulker boxes of copper blocks when you run it. The larger module is roughly three times that amount. So take your pick depending on your copper production needs. Now if you've seen my video about my blast chamber multi-farm, you'll know that I like to implement fault detection mechanisms that alleviate the consequences of things breaking. So let's go over how to fix issues with the copper oxidizer. I can use the selective rendering option from Andrew's tweak fork 
to x-ray this machine and have a look at the primary area where issues happen. This is the merging conveyor which takes all of the block streams coming from the silos and merges them back together into a single block stream. We use a bit of leaf stone right here to detect if any blocks start protruding out of this conveyor system. As you can see, it has conveniently failed for us. Actually, I might have just unloaded it while I was running in order to demonstrate the fault detection. As you can see, right here, the conveyor has broken through the leaf stone and triggered the fault detection mechanism blocking the input. In order to start fixing it, you'll want to go ahead and remove all of these blocks. So essentially every block in this too high space. That is until you get to the very end right here. You also go ahead and fix this conveyor. Remove all of this. Place back the pistons. And make sure to fix the fault detection system. To break all those copper blocks, put the leaf back. We have the observer looking into the leaf as well as a block and redstone dust on top of it. Once this space is all clear of blocks, you want to go through and remove all of these. Just to give a bit of clearance for when you start the machine up again. On the sides of these, I've also left these little holes for blocks to protrude out of in case there is a fault. So just make sure that these are all clear. And now we can place back all the pistons. And then I guess repeat the same steps for the other side if it's also broken. In fact, I'd suggest just doing the same thing on the other side just to keep everything in sync. Around the top of the machine, I'm also going to check these spaces right here for any blockages. From what I can see, there aren't any issues up here. Alright, I think I should be fine to start the farm just by hitting this button to switch off the fault detection. There we go, everything starts moving again. I turn on the x-ray. We can see the inner mechanics of the conveyor system. And we'll have to wait a bit for some blocks to come down and then it'll start processing them. There we go, some blocks just came in and they're starting to be processed. And that is clearly not working. Ah, good thing this machine is smarter than I am, because I actually forgot to put these pistons back. See, I wasn't using a schematic and even I can make dumb mistakes. Alright, now that I've actually placed all of the components that are needed for it to function properly, I can go back to the top and restart it. Let this be a lesson to never unload machines while they're running. I just double checked and all of these conveyors are backed up all the way through into the blast chamber. Unfortunately all I need to do here is just remove these blocks. And then unstick all of these systems. Now that I have unclogged all of those conveyors. It should all be working fine again. I believe so. Yep. All that should be cleared. And I've placed all of the pistons back. We should be good to go. There we go. Working good as new. So unfortunately, it's a harsh reality that as machines get bigger and uglier, they become harder to fix. But you can clearly see that I'm working as hard as possible to make a machine that works with the player to try and get things working. In fact, with all of that in mind, I can probably just go ahead and make a custom schematic detailing how to fix everything. I'm just setting the manual origin to the center of the farm where the player stands. And that should be a perfect schematic of exactly what you need to do to fix anything if it goes wrong. Alright, that is everything I wanted to show about the brand new copper catalyzer. I'll be leaving schematics for the big and small variant down in the description so you can hook them up to a blast chamber of your choosing. As you can tell, the multi-farm is growing and might be a cool concept to explore going forwards. What blocks should I add to the multi-farm blast chamber next? 
let me know in the comments down below. As for now, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.